It's a beautiful day to beat the sun up. Rise and grind and greet your day. Put something new in that coffee cup. Live your life the 6S way. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. Try that new morning routine. And follow your curiosity with RK. It's too early for that note. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Good morning, everyone. This is Jazz the Puppet saying hello to you. Reminding you all today that I'm very, very grateful you've tuned into our radio show this morning to get your morning started off right, to get your morning started off in a chill and calm and smooth kind of way. Glad to see y'all here. Let's say hello to everyone in the chat. Let's do it. I'll go through. Jazz. We got it. Hello, Paige. It's my nice Hi, Hi, Jazz. I, I'm sorry I am not calm like you. I am just so excited to meet you. Oh, you are as beautiful as your picture. You know that, right? Oh, thank you, Paige. Uh, see. See, I think I'm. I think you're a very pretty puppet. You have your face very well put together. Your face is very uh, is very smooth in the way that it all connects nice. Mine's a little bit messed up because well, honey, not very good with the glue. Honey, 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 your mama kind of rushed things. Yeah, uh, she was trying to do it really, really quick. My mama works slow on me. So, you know, there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that that Savvy will be kind and uh, one of these days will make some upgrades to me over time so that I can I can look a little better over the course but, but of you know what looks time. don't matter is what's on the inside that counts. So you are just beautiful just the way you are, okay? So don't let perfect. anybody tell you that you are not just perfect the way you are, okay? That's, that's, you are the way you are because your mama rushed and that's okay. She was excited. She wanted you to be born on her birthday. And, and that is why you are the way you are, you know? So, you know, Paige, that's a very good point. You know how sometimes people say you've got a face for radio. Well, radio is the primary thing that I do. Uh, this show being on camera is a little different for me. Normally I like to host on the radio and because yeah. of that, I don't have to look so pretty. I can look like a hot mess. And yeah, you're like okay. the ventriloquist that uh, that Henson was inspired by that they said was better on the radio because his lips moved when he was doing ventriloquist dummy work. That that's me, right? Right, Jazz. I I'm not good at hiding my face. That's right, Savvy. You 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 don't know how to how to keep your lips closed when you're making me talk. But you know what? That's okay. Haven't you noticed? Neither does my mom. But you know what? Nobody notices because all eyes are on me. We've done this in public before, and people really just look at me, not at mama. Uh, it's where the direction is kind of like magic in misdirection, right? Uh, so, and we are puppeteers. We are not ventriloquists. It's a different art form. Right. Mama can throw her voice for shit. I was saying that jazz was because jazz was meant for the radio. I was saying right. I meant for the radio over here. I meant I meant to be on the radio hosting all the smooth hits for your ride home or your ride to work in the morning early at 6 a.m. Everyone's getting up and getting ready for the day. And I'm here to bring you into the day in a chill and, and cool way. That's right. That, that's really cool. Fun fact, Mama went to broadcasting school back in the dark ages. Oh, wow, Paige. I may have to uh, talk to your mama about that. She sounds like a very cool lady. Well, you know, I, I think so, but of course she's my mama. Oh, Monique, saying that I sound like Delilah, <laughs> that is that is the highest compliment you could possibly give me as I love Delilah. I love the way she says, let's play the love songs tonight. Let's 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 cuddle up with someone you love on the couch and get ready to to. Listen to songs with the ones you love. I love Delilah. She's so she's so romantic. There, see, 
We're getting some Caroline thinks jazz looks amazing. Oh, well, thank you, I Caroline. agree. Jazz I really looks appreciate amazing. That. So does Monique. Oh, you guys are Monique all too sweet. Jazz's voice. And Liz just thinks jazz is super cute. Well, thank you, Liz. Oh, and, and, and Mama watched a video yesterday, and she has suggestions if you want to make the second arm. Oh, thank you, Paige. That would be wonderful. See, right now I only have one arm. Will I this ever have a cool. second arm? I don't know, Jess. Do you ever want to have a second arm? I'm not sure. I, I, I seem to go okay in the world with just one arm, but if you ever want to give me a second arm, I would be open to the possibility. Yeah, Paige, well, what do you think I should do? do only one arm, you could be a uh, representative of people that are not able-bodied. That's true. I could do that. That, that That's something. We thought yeah. about that with one of the puppets because, you know, it's much easier to operate one arm than two. Mama still can't get it right. We have uh, to Yeah, operating yeah. two arms seems hard. I'm struggling just to operate one arm while I move her mouth. Yeah, it's coordination. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what suggestions do you have? Because I may at some point add a second arm. I'd like to make improvements to her over time because she was very fun to make. I, I had a lot of fun putting her together. It's kind of addictive, huh? Oh, yeah. You can see how it went from Violet to all of a sudden she had puppets all around. Yeah, yeah. And Paige, uh, that's what I've noticed, too, as... Um, Paige, I know your your mama built all of you guys in, in like the same. Well, you know what? Let me just uh, go and get mama and, and, and you guys can have an adult conversation, okay? Oh, okay, Paige. I'm okay. sorry. I don't want to talk, talk about no, that. That's okay. That's okay. Mama's uh, arm is getting tired. That's okay, okay. Paige. Okay. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye, Paige. Good to see you. There we go. <laughs> She's adorable. That's just what I have to say about Jazz. She's adorable. Well, well, thank you. That that means a lot coming from the creator of Miss Page, who is a very, very, very beautiful young woman. Oh, thank you. Jazz could be like Dev Leppard's drummer. I love that. That'd I be love awesome. that. In yeah. Arm, so you... When I made this arm yesterday, it uh it did not turn out so well. And then I connected it to her and I was like, maybe I won't attempt to make a second arm right now as this first one has caused me a lot of difficulty. And I ended up gluing fluff to my hands like five <laughs> or six times in the process of making this arm. But that's OK. The hardest part was that the arm, the arm pattern is so thin that turning it inside out before fluffing it was almost impossible. At least very difficult. What I found is that if you do the gluing, well, I sew them, so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit probably easier. A better move. Just, it's, it's keep it solid, yeah. <laughs> just just because there is so little space in that pattern. So one of the things you could do is just adjust and allow a seam allowance, which will make one arm bigger than the other arm on this particular puppet. However, um, the other thing that you can do is when you're first rolling it, you roll it very slowly from the top until it gets to about the halfway point. And then you can start using a pencil to push through oh, okay. and use a push uh, uh, like a pencil or something like that to push through the uh, the fingers because those are really hard the because they're so really close together. Difficult. When I right? the fingers inside out, they basically like... Everything They're so thin. Open, and then there were a bunch of holes, and then the fluff was coming out the holes. Yeah, if you saw us on yesterday's stream, I did. We, yeah, but, but I, you uh, can, her arms were a mess. And you can see the difference here between the size of Yasmin's hands compared to Pages. Yeah. I went bigger. Yeah, yeah. I learned it's like, okay, that's not going to work out for me. So, yeah, sometimes you have to adjust. The patterns aren't all perfect um, because they're made for different people and stuff. So, yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, I, I, I'm I glad that we, we followed this puppet building process because it's really cool to have a whole puppet right here. Even if there are things that I'm like, I would probably improve about her. Even if there are some things that I'm like, this looks a little messy. I like this puppet and I I got her in this uh, in this American Girl doll dress that I didn't know wh who I was going to put it on. But I just got it because I really liked it. And I was like, oh, you know what? This is going to look perfect on this puppet. And she is just she's just thriving in this world. I seriously squeed when I saw you pull it out because I uh, was at work during the episodes, but in the evenings I caught up on the episodes. And when I saw you pull out that dress, I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to go on a shopping spree in American Girl. Oh, the American Girl store is so fun. I don't know if it might be a little big or it might be a little small on Paige. I think she's a little, she's a little bigger. Um, she's just a smidge bigger, but not much. Yeah, they might still fit not. Her yeah. Yeah. I can see that fitting her. And I can always adjust Paige a little bit too. <laughs> so y'all, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about some fun stuff today. I'm gonna bring Jazz back in a second, but I just need to give my arm a break. It's uh all the blood is rushing to my hand. And I need to that's the hardest part of this is that all the blood like your arm blood flow gets cut off all weird. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why Jim Hansen built the tall sets and that sort of thing. So the, that they could do their arms straight up and down as opposed to, that's um, smart. you know, and a lot of the, uh, the builds and the sets was built around the puppets and the operation of the puppets as opposed to, you know, a human set like ours. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I consider today getting under my desk and resting my elbow on my desk and bringing the microphone down with me, but my office is just currently such a mess from having puppet materials everywhere that I was like, I don't even think I can move anything in my setup right now without ruining everything else. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at right now. And typically... Sorry, I do pages videos in another side of the room. I have the <laughs> the human side and the puppet side. And so she has half the room that's her set, her stuff, and everything set up for her over there. And then yeah. we just share the lights. Jazz and Paige to do a video together sometime. I, don't know I absolutely do, want to do that. I think that would be super cute. I think we'll have a video with some puppets talking about small business and all of that. I love it. Um, so y'all real quick in about three hours, a little after the show is over, I am going to have a new video coming out on my main channel. So just wanted to let everyone know about that so that you can, uh, check that out. There will be a premiere with a live chat right here today. We're going to be talking about the company Simon and Schuster and why it's a terrible, terrible company. In my personal opinion, you guys know how I feel about a lot of the bigger publishing companies. Uh, Simon & Schuster, there's a lot of shit going on that I am not a fan of, including the fact that they publish a book by Jake Paul, as well as having published A Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks. So, like, there's just a lot wrong with them. So, we are going to talk about um, Simon & Schuster today at 11 Central, noon Eastern. So, join me in the live chat for that. You can set a reminder right here. The link is right there on the screen and it's right there in the chat. So don't forget to set yourself a reminder so that we can all uh, have fun in the live chat today on my main channel after this stream is over. Um, the show, oh yeah, that's true. Bonnie says great practice for the Sean Boston puppet movie. Yes, I am very, very excited to do the Sean Boston puppet movie and to see the Sean Boston puppet. And I'm excited that I'm going to New Orleans now in late October instead of early October because now we're going to be able to do some puppet filming and I think that'll be great and we're going to be there for longer. Um, but yeah, the, the I'm very excited for the Sean Boston puppet. Nitty Dragon, real quick, wants to know where did the success rule come from in the intro? So here's the thing. Uh, one day, I think it was during one of our first couple weeks, um, RK was just saying... Just reminding everyone to stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. And we realize that that is six S's in a row. And that when you put the word, when you say six S together, it sounds like success. And that sounds like a rule that a business guru would come up with. Kind of like how Grant Cardone has the 10 X rule. So we were like, we'll make the six S rule. So we'll have our own rule and we can be just like them. So that's where the success rule comes from. 
Um, let's see. Monique says Paige and Jazz would be a very adorable collab. Thank you. I would love to do that. I think that that would be fun. So yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to do that at some point. So you guys, this week we read Jim Henson's biography. Um, I listened to it on Audible on my walks to the gym and my walks with Chewy. And uh, it was, that was the way to listen to this incredibly long book. This book was long as hell. It was longer than it needed to be. That's my overall review is that it's longer than it needed to be. But it was also very good. I don't know. RK, what were your thoughts? Uh, so <clears throat> I'm sort of distracted at the moment because there's a little mouse. In this a house. little mouse? Yeah, he's a cutie. He's not, it's not a rat. It's a little mouse. And um, I'm trying to see where he goes super fast. And we keep locking eyes. And then he runs away because I'm obviously enormous. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, like, show I'm not going to hurt him so I can lure him outside. But he think I think he's scared now and ran away. But he was he was a little cutie. Yeah, he, he he was in Logan's empty food bag at first. That's my Oh, that's over. adorable. Poor little mouse. Yeah, he's definitely scared after the hurricane. I think he's just looked for a place to stay. Oh, poor guy. Well, he's anyway. just trying to he's just trying to find a place to oh, stay. Oh, I have no issue with them. I'm not like if it was a rat, I'd probably freak out a little bit. But a little mouse, he's cute. As long as he doesn't poop in my food, I'm good. Yeah, what a cutie. Maybe you can keep him as a pet. No, I don't think that. I think I just want to get him outside. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I know that some people keep mice as pets. Mice are very cute. They're adorable. And they're tiny. And they they squeak like they're excited or being tortured. But he keeps like poking his head out from under the, the, the water cooler area. To see Can you I'm show cool. us? Can we see him? Or is he not? Right now. I'm just, okay. That's why I keep looking over there to see if he's going to make another attempt. Because maybe I could like lead some. If anyone here has any experience not killing mice, let me know. Because I'm thinking what I might do is like a trail of food outside or some shit. But he's also tiny, so I don't think I'll be able to eat through a whole trail. I think I'll just like eat one and turn away. You can pick up live traps at any hardware store. Like they just capture them. You just put the bait inside. They capture them. The door closes, and then you can take them and carry them outside. That's a good idea. I'll because that's really what we did when we had them because I had young children. And yeah. yeah. Actually, that's then we got the killer traps. But if you don't want to kill them, there are options. <laughs> well, it's not, it's, it's not even my house and just someone's rental. So I figure it's the landlord's problem. So I don't want to kill any mice. And if they start infesting by the time we move out, it's not my problem either. I just want to not kill him. But as far as the hardware store, I'll see if any are open because a lot of places are still closed. Oh, I'd imagine. Yeah, but no, thanks. That's good advice. As for the book, it was long. It was definitely long. It was long. In the first <laughs> few chapters, I was like, dude, get to the Muppets already. Like, the first few chapters were like, so Jim Henson was born here, and his here's his mom and here's his dad. Now, real quick, yeah, let's just... like great-grandpa. Let's and just talk... You Sorry. I was going to say, see, for me, I read 100 to 150 pages an hour. So a book like that goes very quickly yeah. for me. So I didn't notice Great. that as I was reading uh, that it was long and drawn out because I love uh, the background and the stories, like the genealogy yeah. and that sort of stuff. So I liked those sections. Um, I did find as I read on that he was such an asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wondered how he could have become such an icon and how, like, what really frustrated with me is how people enabled him. People oh, enabled yeah. him to be that kind of jerk. Jim Henson was the fucking worst dude. And he is remembered as like this very sweet guy. They're like, oh, he's so kind. He was so sweet. And it's like, no, dude, you just think the Muppets are cute. And like you, and they are. The Muppets are fantastic. I love them. I am I think I love them. I'm always going to love them. Um, but it's like people think that when someone creates something you love, they assume that they're a nice person. And that's just that's just often not true. Here's uh, so one of my tweets about the book got noticed by the author last night. Oh, neat. 
It was super neat. So here I'm pulling up my tweets about this. So basically here is what I tweeted. And this was uh, the context was I was walking back from the gym last night and I had just got to the point in the book where um, uh, they're producing the Muppet show in London in like the late seventies. And at that point, um, so Jim had to move to London and his wife Jane stayed with the kids in the U.S. And uh, the thing, the the context of this too, which I've been ranting about on Twitter all week, is that Jim and his wife Jane created the Muppets together in the late '50s. They created it together, dude. They were business partners before they were married. They were business partners before they were even dating. When they created the Muppets, they were both engaged to other people and didn't have any intention of getting together and then later chose to get together. And the reason they got together also, I mean, they got together for love, but also because they work together so well as business partners and love doing the Muppets together. And then once they started having kids, it was like, oh, well, now then, then Jim started taking over the business and being like, well, we have kids, so Jane's primary thing has to be being the mom to the kids. And it's like, dude, she didn't even want to marry you until the Muppets. Why are, Why is everything about you now? And so that was just like, like that, that was, I got very mad about that. And then I was reading the book and it was, this is, uh, you know, 20 years after that while he's off in London making Muppets and it says Jim it was like Jim was a devoted father he made the time to call his kids every night before bed while working on the Muppets in London and I was like you're saying he called them while his wife was in person with them every single day and had given up her entire half of the Muppets company for their sake but he's a devoted parent like how, then later it was like Jim never knew how to cook. He only knew how to put together very stupid foods. And I'm like, so he didn't cook for his kids either? How are the standards for men in the gutter? The standards for men are so low. So I just started getting mad about how low the standards for men are. And let me be clear. I'm also a workaholic who barely knows how to cook. But I don't claim to be a devoted mother to anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is for men, the standards are just, they're just, they're just underground. Um, this is what I told uh, Jim. Jim is uh, slutty as well, which is not a bad thing. When I say slutty, I don't mean that as a bad thing. Uh, but I think a lot of people remember him as very wholesome. No, dude, Jim was a big slut who was a, wanted to bang everybody, which I get it. I'm a big slut too. I'm a slutty workaholic. Uh, Jim and I have a lot in common. I'm a slutty workaholic. I barely know how to cook, but that's why I didn't have five kids, Jim, because don't have five kids. If you. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Now, for me, I, I was a loving and devoted mother, and I was also a workaholic. I found ways to mix them all together, but uh, the fact is that I had to do twice as much work at that time. Now I'm a lazy princess, but back <laughs> then... Um, and I am. I'm a truly lazy princess. I gain I 20 to 30 hours a week uh, just by not doing the things that most women have to do. Uh, I don't get a lazy vibe from you at all. You you have this amazing like puppet empire you're building while you're also working a job at a restaurant. That sounds like the opposite of lazy to me. Well, I, yes. I think that's the thing, too, is I think women are are, are deemed lazy for a lot less. Well, I guess so. But at the same time, I completely abdicate all household duties to someone else. So that builds me 20 to 30 hours a week that other women don't have. That's like, true. That's just reality is if I had to pay attention to the shopping, the cooking, the cleaning, uh, and even those little, like I've read articles about this, you know, the uh, the brain capacity that it takes to oh, yeah. uh, remember, you know, oh, the dog needs food or we need toilet paper. None of that is on me. So, Well, that's the thing too, though, is like, why is the default expectation that it, that expectation is on women anyway? It's like because we've taken it. I don't we've, take it. I just well, never have. So I'm like, 
It is the the house is not clean? Oh, too bad. But then again, I'm disgusting, so there might be uh, I might be uh, different in that case. Like for me, it's just like not na natural to want to clean things, so I just like. Tyler and I sometimes clean things together. Like if the house gets messy, we'll be like, all right, let's spend these five minutes or these this hour cleaning the house together. And then we'll clean it together and get it done. But neither of us really ever take on the cleaning for each other. If we do it together or not at all, really. Um, so I'm just like, I just think it's like uh, weird that, that that's even the default expectation. Um so this is basically what I went on saying is where can I read Jane's biography? I looked it up. So right. Jane co-created the Muppets. This is like, imagine if like 10 years from now, RK and I got married and then he stole cancel Sean Boston from me. Wouldn't that be fucking weird? Like that would be fucking weird. Uh, that that's the last thing I'd steal from you is cancel Sean Boston. <laughs> Or like he just stole everything we've made together from me, and then Speaking. that's like that's like what this would be, right? Um, but like that would be fucking weird, and would like that would like everyone would be weirded out by that in our audience. But that's what Jim did to Jane. The two of them were engaged to other people, and built the Muppets together. They were business partners, and then they got married. And then he was like, "Actually, you should raise all the kids and stay home." And I should continue to build this business. Like, that's fucking weird. And the fact that people accepted this is just blows my mind. Part of it was standards of the time, too, because it was like the mid 50s. And everybody was like, how can Jim and Jane be business partners and work together and not be romantically involved? Because the idea of like a man and woman doing anything together that wasn't romantic or sexual was very weird to people at the time. So they were like, but these two must be involved, right? And they weren't. Well, now they, I mean, then I will say now they are. Now they're both dead. But like they, then later they were. Um, but so basically I was mad about that. So then I was like, where can I read Jane's biography? I looked it up and I can't find one. Maybe no one has written one because her own husband literally erased her from history after she created the Muppets, like every man of that era did. And then. Then I got a quote tweet from the author of the book on that. Check that out. So the author of the book, Brian J. Jones, said and he was he agreed. He seems like a cool dude. I like Brian, Brian J. Jones. So we're going to take a look at this. So he said, Jane Henson definitely deserves to be the subject of a biography. She was tough as nails, openly and brutally honest and wore her heart on her sleeve. She was also modest to a fault. Her initial response to the first draft of Jim's bio, you made me sound too damn important. See, that's the thing, dude. She sounds great. She sounds like a great person. And, um, oh, wait, sorry. I didn't even realize how much more of this thread there was. I was too busy. Um, it's too busy making gains last night. And then I told him how much I appreciate his book. And I told him that despite all my feminist rants, I am loving his work. Um, so let's read what Brian says. So maybe, maybe I'm being too hard on Jim. You know what? I'm going to give Brian, I'm going to let Brian explain it himself because he actually replied to me directly. And that's the dream. So he said, uh, I told her, I beg to differ him that there was a reason Jim chose her as his first <clears throat> partner. She was hugely talented, which is what attracted Jim to her in the first place. I disagree that Jim erased her from Muppet history, but it's fair to feel that way. Jim relied on her as his ace recruiter and she was his sounding board. Even as they were separated, Jim still sought her advice on the Disney deal. Yeah, I, I guess that it's like she was, but that's the thing is like, she was not remembered at the time as like having done all this legitimate work for the company and said it was like, she was such a supportive wife to this. Like his name was the thing on everything. His name was the thing that was like, like he's the one that that got all the credit in, throughout history. If you ask people, but I Eugene think is, them, people just fucking forget. They're like, who? Yeah, that's the problem. I think too that it, she was a product of her times. It wasn't common for women to take a front seat in anything. It, we were always the supportive ones. We were always, you know, how they had that uh, saying that behind every successful man is an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. But 
we were behind them. It wasn't like, and, and at that time, that would be the way it was. Would she be the same person if she was raised in the 2000s? I don't know, dude. And that's the thing is in the book, it makes it very clear at the beginning that she's a very ambitious person. Like she goes and gets a master's degree. She's wants, she's studying all of these, the, the like artistry behind this. And like this, like she has big career goals and seems to be focused on this. And then she just gets shoved aside. I'm not, I guess I won't say that Jim intentionally shoved her aside or that he was a bad dude or anything, but it's just like, but he was that, a bad dude, but <laughs> yeah, he kind of was. That's the thing is like, at the time it's like, but we're like, we're all men in, in the, in, in that time period, just bad. Like, I think so. I think they would, all might've been, I don't know, maybe not all, but like, I'll, like if that was just considered that normalized, like that's bad. That's really bad, dude. Like, well, when you think about it, it wasn't until the 70s where women could even have their own credit card. Oh, that's you true. You think that it is, you know, ancient history and Couldn't that have sort their own of credit thing. Card, though? Yes. Oh, Men I didn't know if it their... was one of those things where, like, married couples just needed to get credit cards together in general or something. No, a man oh, could okay. go and get a credit card on his own back then. But women had to have the permission of somebody else to have one, even if they had their own job and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's just like, yeah, I guess it really is just a, a product of the era. But I'm I just like I find like, I just find it so frustrating, too, that like if you complain about this to people, they think it's they, they think it's dumb. But it's like, no, dude women have done so much unpaid labor throughout the entirety of history and yeah oh, and man. continue to do so and continue to do so and continue to do so i, I mean as we've absolutely. seen over the I last mean, year in the pandemic ago that you thought you were lazy you are absolutely not lazy and that but it's like i think that women are just held to these higher standards well, and I think, too, that if you don't live up to the normal standards where you don't do the normal girly things like doing the housework, then people consider you lazy, even though you do a thousand other things. Right. I'm grateful that nobody considers me lazy, which is great because I almost never do any housework. And it's more so that, like, Tyler and I do housework together every week or so. We'll do a couple things together. But uh, we don't really do housework separately because that's boring. It's boring to do housework by yourself. Oh, I disagree. I love turning up the tunes and just cranking. Oh. Up. Not often, not often because I don't have to, but like when I do get in the mood for it and it's a mood for me. Um, I only do it when I feel like it. <laughs> so I only have to do it when I feel like it. It's always a bonus. So uh, anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm actually working on Sean Boston as we speak. Oh, awesome. Oh, by the way, Gail's here. Hey, Gail, I know that you've read this book as well. Gail, do you, if you want to come on the stream, let me know and I'll send you the link because I, if you want to talk about it too, uh, I'd love to have your opinion as well. Okay. How's Sean Boston coming along? Let's take a look at our puppet. Well, I'm still just working on perfecting the body because before I can put the, the fleece on it, I needed to smooth all this out. So you saw me with the scissors go in and trying to smooth everything yeah. out. Um, and so I'm just basically perfecting this part and then we're going to cut in his his uh, six pack. And <laughs> oh, man. I I think that with his six pack, I'll actually use more uh, color and because uh, I... I'm not sure about cutting into the foam and giving him actual lines. That might just be accomplished through color. I'm <laughs> very shade. excited to see this puppet. Painting. I'm excited to see him too. They All sort right. of come to life yeah. on their yeah, own. I, I don't just... mind if you're not done with the book. I haven't finished the whole thing either. It's really, really long. And I've yeah, I read it about it. two years ago, so a lot of my memories of it, like I do have it on the Kindle, and I kind of refreshed my memory this week, but it was a couple of years ago that I read it. Um, Gail, there's the link right there. Come on the show. Uh, book title, I think it's just the Jim Henson biography. It is. Yeah, I don't think it has any title beyond that. Um, but it's by Brian J. Jones. 
and he's cool. I mean, he replied to me on Twitter and shared his research. I'm I'm a fan. I'm a fan. What's up, Gail? Oh, hey. hey. I didn't I did realized. Oh, you got oh, on your cool. shirt. Look at that. I, I I saw that and I was like, "Oh, Oh, I did not mean to dress for the occasion, but okay. Look at this, there's puppets everywhere. This is just a whole stream full of puppets. I love it. Hey, Gail, it's nice to meet you. I, I, I'm i glad we get to meet face to face. I'm very, very, very impressed with that theme song that you wrote and performed for us. Everybody meet Gail. If you haven't been on the show lately, Gail was a guest on our show a long time ago and she's back today. And she is the creator of the theme song that you hear at the beginning. It goes, it's a beautiful day to beat the sun up, right? Everybody gets going. Everybody gets going on a beautiful day to beat the sun up. And she always reminds us that every day is a beautiful day to Aww. wake up early and start your day here. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful Aww, song, Gail. You. Uh, I appreciate it. Jazz, you are super chill. Uh, I love your energy. It's wonderful. Um, and yeah, and I, it's so funny, like, uh, that, that bit about it's too early for that note. I, I will tell you, uh, I don't always make it to the stream because I realized for my morning routine that it's like, I can't, I got, I got things. That's when I practice ukulele. That's when I like do Duolingo and not talk to people, but I'm here today. So. <laughs> what languages on Duolingo are you working on? Um, Spanish and German. Oh, fantastic. Good job. Yeah. And I, I, yes, and that's sort of my, my uh, habit that I'm trying to be less compulsive about social media. So I'm like, if I'm going to be addicted to my phone, I might as well learn Spanish. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many productivity apps on, on iPhones. They're wonderful. I fucking yeah. love Yeah. It's um, funny. It, as, I, I, as I delete more social media on my phone, my screen time goes up because I just do cooler apps. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I will share, I'm not going to work on this while we stream because it's a fiddly little project, but these are gloves I'm working on. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah. So they're nice little fingerless gloves, but it's a, it's a, it's a project that you have to focus on. So I'm going to set that there and not mess it up. But yeah. Yeah, well, we're very grateful that you came, you came on this morning to talk to us because we, we all love your song. It gets us all moving. And it's okay if it's too early for that note, <laughs> because the note still gets us, it still gets us excited for the morning and excited to beat up the sun. Yay. Well, I appreciate that. Oh, take her off my hand again, because my hand gets <laughs> tired easily with that puppet. Didn't realize how tiring it was going to be. And I just want to my with... left arm with the puppet. It, it does. It takes practice. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to shout out to Marie because she said I love my, she loves my hair collar. Aww. And I just want to say thank you because it has taken me so long to finally get to a color I like uh, with this whole process. I wanted to go gray. You'd think that going gray would be easy since I'm already, you know, 40 percent gray. But it's it's hard. <laughs> I've gone through a lot to get it. Looks it looks good. Point. It really looks thank good. Thank you. I finally uh, got it to the right point and I went uh, with the Manic Panic and uh, it finally worked. The Manic so. Panic bleach works really well for my hair. I like that a lot. That's how I get it blonde. Yeah, and uh, I had used Manic Panic for all my purples. Um, by the time I got to this show, I had been done with purple, but uh, I love the Manic Panic uh, purple. It was my most awesome color. Also, Gail, if you want to practice your German with a native speaker, you can hit up Crow Love Score. Okay, who, cool. Uh, <laughs> speaks German. Oh, uh, my mom is here. What's up, mom? Oh, wait, here. Oh. I'll let the puppet say hi to you, mom. Hello, Savvy's mom. We're very grateful <laughs> for you because if Savvy didn't exist, then I couldn't exist. So I guess in a way, you are like my grandmother. And that's why it's wonderful to meet you. <laughs> um but yeah uh yeah everyone loves gail's theme songs it's great oh uh good morning Liv. yeah anyways says mm -hmm. gail beautiful song yeah and and i this is where i feel like i i promote my services a little bit but uh no i i i write uh theme songs for different uh I, writing theme songs for podcasts is actually one of my favorite things because it's it's really cool to like capture the exact energy of a show yeah. 
and like the genre and the vibe. So like, I, I absolutely love it. So Ooh, I need your price list. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean i i just i love the theme song you sent it to us and i'm like oh dude you put a bunch of our our jokes and a bunch of our little catchphrases in there perfect it was just oh, great yeah. i mean also i like writing something as a fan is also very fun because <laughs> i was just like oh i get to write them a song and it's so yeah anyway um and <laughs> all the rabbit holes and i will say like it, it it's funny like i've gotten from the, the place of my fan my fan obsession of of things where i'm like all right and now we're just chill it's fine it's chill we're just people on the internet talking to each other yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's been a those parasocial relationships get you every time but anyway i'm glad oh, i could yeah. uh yeah i'm glad i'm glad that i was able to to work with you on that um any and uh yeah so i can tilt things towards the book because uh yeah let me know your thoughts on the book i mean at least or two as far as you've gotten in it i don't know what page 200 is because um i'm listening we, to it on audible well, so. for sure i'm in i'm in the it's the mucking fuppets chapter and oh, okay. it is uh and so we're just getting the pieces together in the muppet show and jane just had her moment of like yeah no dude uh this is like she's she's starting to to get really stressed so that's about where i'm at and um, so it's interesting. Uh, the Muppets are actually like a big thing in, in, in my family. Um, uh, my brother, uh, is the sort of person where if, uh, if someone could like just pay him to be a Muppet and Disney scholar, like that would be his life. Uh, so that like, sounds those, fun. <laughs> you know, it. uh, but yeah, so my brother has always had this deep love of the Muppets and, uh, has experienced like people will give him crap because it's like oh that you know puppets are for kids and it's like no <laughs> puppets are for everybody. that's also a hill i will die on in general is oh, yeah. just people thinking anything is for kids like mm -hmm. i don't know maybe maybe like teething toys are for babies or something like that unless it's specifically designed for a child's physical development anything mm -hmm. that is just for fun can be enjoyed by anyone like when people will be like oh this this kid's a little immature for their age they're still playing with dolls and i'm like what do you mean i'm 29 and i still play with dolls and i don't have any intention of stopping mm -hmm. this is one of those things where like i never stopped liking toys i think sometimes with adults who like toys there's like a period where you as a kid you have to stop playing with toys because it's like you have to it's not cool to play with toys and then when you're an adult it's cool to collect toys or to do things like that but i'm like no why do I have to ever stop playing with toys? What is exactly. why? Sometimes I just go to the American Girl store, and as people know, but I'm like, people probably think I'm here shopping for my kid or something. But no, I'm just here to like examine the displays and enjoy all the interesting stuff they have to offer. Like, yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with toys, man, um, or puppets. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Anyway, but uh, but yeah. So, and I've always. So I've always loved the Muppets. It's a thing my brother and I connect on. And as I'm reading this book and like it's I identify with like the Jim's hustle and creativity oh, and how the creative brain works. And I'm also just like it's 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 so hard as far as the the Jane factor goes. It's so hard to think, oh, he gets to do that, you know, be, like, like, it, it's hard to sit and go like, I could not do the things that he was doing during that time period, you know, time yeah. period and like, and sit with that. And also, um, I am also very much aware and very grateful that um, at least like, that I'm able to share a lot of the responsibilities, like I'm living, I'm living that dink life. But my oh, husband yeah. does a lot of 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 the house spouse things mm -hmm. you know and and because he's he's um well now he's at work uh but uh but he's in in school right now and mm -hmm. so it's uh so he's home more than i am and so yeah. like we delegate and the reason i'm able to do all of the things is because we have that delegation and yeah. you know and so it's and and also like it's a fair balance, but it's just, it's just interesting thinking about how it wasn't that long ago where it was like, Oh, this, this is, this is all the woman's job and it is delegated to, 
to her. And it's interesting looking at that in the context of my family. And so I'm being very introspective with this book is what I'm saying. Oh, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but like, and my, and my, and my mom uh, was like working with computers as like, as computers were becoming a thing, like she was in college for uh, uh, accounting. And then it was like, computer science is a thing. And then she worked in computers her whole life and was a database administrator and worked with then worked in a male dominated field. And thus her energy was very much like, uh, she took, she gave no, she gave no fucks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, and, um, and I did not necessarily learn the best cleaning habits from her. And yeah. I kind of sometimes feel bad about that, but why, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, it's the thing is like um I don't know. It's just there's so many like towards the beginning, it's very clear how many women were influential mm -hmm. on this whole process in the first place. But getting I mean, they get credit in the book, they don't get credit culturally though. That's mm -hmm. why I appreciate the author giving all the credit where it's due, but the culturally the, is the problem where it'll be like oh, Jim was very inspired by his grandmother sewing and things like that. And it's like, okay, well, why is the expectation that, oh, cool, this young boy loves to sew. He's probably going to be a famous puppeteer, whereas this grandmother loves to sew. That means she can sew things for her children and get no recognition beyond her proximity mm -hmm. to successful men. And it's like, that was just, and then like Jim goes to puppeteering class in college and it's almost all women. And then he goes to work and it's almost all men. Like there's almost no, every time they bring up a new person that they worked with is like, oh, it's another man. Oh, wow. An yet another man. Mm -hmm. Where are all these women that were studying puppeteering in college? Well, the idea was yeah. that, oh, it's the home ec department. So they're probably just using the sewing skills to mend clothes for their children and such and it's like what the fuck like there was this the hey, expectation yeah. yeah in all of the careers that you know it's considered domestic work until a man does it and takes it into the career field you look at chefs you mm -hmm. know how many women slave away at the stove for years and years and get no recognition for it and yeah. yet you can be a chef and all of a sudden ooh, you're special and it takes <laughs> yeah. so much for a woman to break into that field well and um and that's that's a that's the uh so my my husband is is it w in the culinary industry but he's actually studying to be a registered uh dietitian nutritionist and so like he's kind of living in that cuz that is a cuz he he had a lot of toxic male bosses and now he has two lady bosses, which is exciting. Um, I, in a, in a culinary world, that's amazing. But uh, but but yeah, no, the diet the, the dietary field is predominant. It, he he's like having that moment of like, oh yeah, this is going to be a predominantly female field. This will be interesting. And I'm like, but but anyway, that's a that's a whole other thing. But I get things where it's just like, oh, your husband's a chef. Well, you're special. I'm like, yeah, but I have to cook sometimes too. What are what are you doing? Like. <laughs> you know there's like this weird double standard thing that happens sorry that was a tangent um i talked uh, about this exact topic in my uh business owners facebook group while i right mm -hmm. after i started the book and mm -hmm. i said this is a weird topic but i'm curious your opinions because mm -hmm. my business owners facebook group if anyone wants to join let me know i'll send you the link it's the majority of the group supports women in business, but you don't have to be a woman to join. Anyone can join as long as you're going to support each other and in the small business journey. But um, it is a mo it's mostly women in business in this group, which is why I asked this question where I said, um, I'm wondering how sexism affected this industry, which has so far not been discussed in this book. But Jim and his wife, Jane, met as co-workers and business partners, yet she was the one to give up her career and raise the kids and gave up being a puppeteer. Jim's puppetry classes in college were almost all women because the classes were in the home ec department in the 1950s. Yet almost all the men succeeded in design and performance while the women faded into obscurity and used their skills for homemaking. Do you ever feel that your industry gets dominated by men, even though most of the creators are women? Are women. Oh, oh. There's an There's echo. echo. Where's that? Where's that? The echo that is. Arcade. It was arcade. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Echo's gone. We're good. Um, but yeah, that's the thing is like when people talk about this industry is dominated by men, people say, oh, women just aren't choosing to go into it. But in a lot of cases, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Even careers that mostly women are studying for or trying to go into still get dominated by men in a mm-hmm. lot of cases. So um, a lot of people were commenting on this, basically saying that they've had that experience as well. That like um, someone mentioned fashion saying, I worked at a company with 90% female employees, all design, sales, production, management, marketing, customer service, and data entry were 100% female. There were a few male sample sewers, warehouse workers, and then all upper management were men. The CEOs and CFOs were both middle-aged white men named Rob. (laughs) All head departments were men making decisions about what items made the final cut for a women's only fashion line. One time a designer asked for a raise and they told her she didn't need it because her husband was a lawyer. So they obviously had enough money. Like this is a thing that just keeps happening, dude. It just keeps happening. Um, People were talking about the theater and film industry. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then Gail showed up in the thread to mention the music industry um oh and someone mentioned authors right the field that i'm in it says someone says um male authors a lot of their acknowledgments don't mention their wives names and often have lingo like without my wife this book wouldn't be possible thank you for typing up all my crazy notes there's nothing more anger inducing to me than being reduced to a secretary but apparently some women don't mind and enjoy it i lost a friend a few years ago because she was married to a man i didn't know at all and when i went to visit them in another state he was telling me how much she improved his life by making his house a comforting place to be and being his thing finder for when he lost something he needed and she left her career and her family and everything for him (laughs) like wow wow man (laughs) it's just like and here's the thing i am a believer in everybody doing what makes them happy in life if it makes you happy to do that in your life whether you are male female whatever if you it makes you happy to be supportive of your spouse's career above all else then then do Mm -hmm. that like do that it's just when there's such a, a big trend of it i start to wonder how many people are being pressured into this oh yeah absolutely that's what it is but if you're not if you're happy doing your thing like do your thing i am not here to tell if anybody if your dream is to be a homemaker a stay-at-home parent whether you're a man or a woman you do you and i will be happy and support you i just don't ever want to see people feeling pressured out of the thing they're passionate about but please have a fuck off fund Oh, if you are fun, going yeah. to be a stay-at-home person in mm-hmm. any way, shape, or form, please have a fuck-off fund. Because if you get stuck in a situation where you have no financial uh, abilities, uh, yeah. it can be difficult to get out of that toxicity without a fuck-off fund. So, <laughs> I like that term a lot. Just That's wonderful. That. <laughs> But well, yeah. and everyone would should have one. Like yeah. no woman should feel trapped in a job where she's being sexually harassed and have to choose yeah. to take it because she doesn't have a fuck off fund. You should always be working towards having the ability to walk away from what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree. As Marie brings up here, domestic work should be paid or at the very least appreciated. Oh, mm-hmm. completely agree. Absolutely. I think it's wild that people are providing a a value to society and yet we're we're i don't know if this is u.s specific or maybe maybe just kind of like this part of the world specific i don't know but the the way things are seen is that things value is a lot of people equate it to the financial value because people equate money with your ability like patricia said you need a fuck off fund right because money equals power and freedom whereas without money you can get trapped easily so the mm-hmm. fact is that like leads people to equate money to power easily. And so then we have these these fields that are beneficial to society such as domestic work that don't get money. So that's sending the message that that isn't valued. And people say, "Oh, well, it gives your family money because you're not hiring someone outside the family to do it." Or that kind of thing, which I guess is true to an extent, but basically this is just another this is just another argument for universal basic income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um oh hippodamia has a fuck off fund and literally calls it that. Love it. Love it. 
Um, Liz says, I'm technically staying at home with my toddler, but I still do part-time consulting work. That's interesting. Why do you, mm -hmm. like, this is just me asking you this, Liz. I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just asking you, why do you consider that staying at home? Because the majority of the world is working from home during the pandemic. So why wouldn't you call that working from home rather than staying at home? Hmm. It was just a thing that I've noticed. Like I've read a lot of things where it says like, where I've read like bios of female authors that's, that call themselves a stay at home mom. And I'm like, how are you a stay at home mom if you're an author? An author is a full time career, dude. Like, mm -hmm. or even if it's a part time career for you, which like, good luck making it in writing as a part time career. But like, if that's what if that's what you're doing, good for you. Like, live your life. But why do people consider themselves a stay at home parent when they're a work at home parent? Mm -hmm. Like, my husband works from home in software development right now, but he wouldn't call himself a house husband mm -hmm. because that would be ridiculous. Like. We both work from home right now, but we wouldn't call ourselves an unemployed couple, you know, like it just as weird that people will work from home and call themselves staying at home when the world is all working from home during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. this yeah, is, uh, yeah. as a Spencer Punk says, this is interesting to hear as a disabled woman. I'm on welfare right now and the government thinks I have no value because it's not economic. Mm. That is a huge issue. That is a huge issue. The idea that people try to type humans to their financial value. This was basically my live stream on Monday, which was about <laughs> you, can real jobs exploit you like MLMs. And it, it led into this whole discussion of like how the world shouldn't be valuing humans based on their monetary value, which is what we're back to right now. Mm -hmm. It always leads, I guess all the issues in the world lead back to this, I guess. And one of the things that really frustrates me is least in Canada from the point of view of uh, people on disability and things like what we have here in Alberta is called a assured income for the severely handicap or the age program. You can't make over a certain amount before you start to lose benefits. Yeah. So even if you are disabled and you, there's, you know, uh, I helped a couple of people start their own businesses with disabilities. We got funds to get them started and that sort of thing but they can only make a certain amount otherwise they start losing some of their benefits mm -hmm. and they need those benefits for their medication and this exactly. that and the other thing yeah. and it's like how can I move forward as a disabled person without losing the supports I have and that's the stupidest thing I've ever encountered in my life Absolutely. Most. That's the argument. Like when people make the argument for me against universal basic income being like, it'll stop incentivizing people to work. And I'm like, no, a lot of the systems now are set up in a way where if you start working, you lose your benefits. So it de-incentivizes people from following their dreams because they're worried that they won't be able to afford their medication and stuff. If you have the safety net of you get a certain amount of money every month, regardless of any, everything else in the world, then it's going to, I don't know, man. I don't know. And you're in Canada, too, where, like, medication is supposed to be, you're, you have a better healthcare system than we have. So I imagine we, here it's probably really fucked. We have healthcare which covers your going to the doctor and that mm. sort of thing. It does not cover dental care. It does not cover uh, prescription medication. Uh, the programs that they have through the different social programs, they do cover medication, do cover eye care and dental care. So if you are disabled, you get access to those programs. But if you don't qualify for those programs, uh, there's separate insurance that you have. And I forget, like, I mean, it's much, much lower cost than anything I've heard of in the U S because it basically is to cover your prescriptions and things like ambulance rides. Like mm -hmm. if you end up needing an ambulance, it will come out of pocket unless you have uh, extended insurance. So we do have, mo you know, like if I get sick and I need to go to the doctor, yes, I can go to the doctor, but I have to pay for the medication unless I'm in a hospital, in which case the medication is covered. So that's, uh, that's the way it works here. It's not perfect, but I'm not going to end up without a house or uh, anything if I end up breaking an arm or uh, getting cancer. Mm -hmm. It's wild too that like so many people try to, like so many US politicians try to paint Canada's healthcare system as like this socialist communist dystopia, when in reality it's like just slightly better than ours. That's like all it is. It's like almost the same system, just slightly better. Like, what? <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, and we have so many politicians trying to bring in a U.S. style system yeah. with the pay for play programs and trying yeah. to make it so that we have a two tiered system so the rich people can get better health care. And it's it's ridiculous, really. Yeah. I mean, we should be trying to provide more yeah. programs. Uh, I, I'm especially passionate about it because I am the daughter of a schizophrenic and mm. we had to rely on different programs if it wasn't for the programs available where would have her had drugs have come from right. you know i mean yeah it's just ridiculous in some ways um this is such a fascinating discussion i love here's the thing guys i love when books spark these discussions that take us all the way into these bigger themes about the universe because like now we're talking about all these like healthcare systems and like what would be mm. better ways to um, even the playing field and different working fields and things like that. And it's like, you know, are we off topic? I don't even think we're off topic because I'm like, this book inspired these discussions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, it really is when you look at it, like the situation that Jane found herself in uh, with being the one that had to go home that's the way it happens in i don't know percentage wise but probably 90 percent of the families it's just the default you have a baby mom stays home mm -hmm. um you know there's often very little discussion about it or you know i i imagine in in more modern families that there would be discussion about who stays home and that sort of thing i know personally what i experienced uh, with my ex-husband was prior to having babies, he would clean, he would cook, he would do this, that, and the other thing. And as soon as I had a baby, it was as if I was expected to take it all on. It's mm -hmm. like, and there was no discussion. There was no, oh, you're home more, you know, you should take on more of the load or anything like that. It was just, he stopped doing it because... I was there and it's like, wait a second, we've been together for eight years and all of a sudden everything changes because we had mm -hmm. a baby. All of a sudden I'm expected to do these things. I don't do want to so do more, these things. Like after you yeah. just gave birth, which is like a traumatic experience for a lot of people. Yeah. And that's, yeah. The, I think part of the, the reason, this is what we talked about when I, I streamed on Monday on my main channel about this, about, um, you know, the ways that companies exploit people and the ways that MLMs exploit people and why they often target women. And a lot of the problem is specifically in the US, we don't have guaranteed maternity leave or or paternity leave for fathers either, where it's like this, this problem where, okay, you just gave birth, that's a traumatic experience. Now your employer has every right to say, oh, well, you need to take off three months for your body to recover from this physical labor job after giving birth. Well, that's a hurts our company's profits and therefore we can drop you from the company now. And so a lot more women end up losing money and becoming unemployed and things like that when they're the ones to give birth. And then that's what ends up being like, okay, well maybe I need to stay at home because my husband's the one who can make the money anyway, because th this company doesn't mm -hmm. value pregnant women and things like that. And we are so blessed. Thanks that we have our, 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 um, maternity leave here in Canada oh, through yeah. our EI. Mm -hmm. uh, now it has uh, changed since I had children. When I first had my first baby, it was six months. It has now extended to a full year. And uh, a portion of that time is for fathers. Um, it's it's uh, not called... Um, it's called parental benefits as opposed to maternity benefits. So you have a certain period of time, I believe it's four months that only the mom can take. And then the rest of the time, either the mom or dad can take. And it also ap applies to adoptive situations. So if you adopted a child um, and you get, it's 55% of your wage. So in some cases, some people find that that's not enough for them to live on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. But that's great. That's the thing too, is that like, that's a good way for 
the government to incentivize or like to reward people for continuing the next generation and things like that or for becoming a parent because like I have no intention of becoming a parent but I value those hmm. who do because it's a lot of work and it's a you provide a lot of value by like making other humans or adopting other humans or just like preparing other humans to continue to do things in the world yeah yeah it, it, uh, it, yeah like being a parent is teaching uh teaching other humans how to human and you have to and I, for me i'm like i want to make sure i have my stuff together before yeah. i'm responsible for other humans absolutely absolutely like, and yeah. we do have the child tax benefit here in Canada too. Um, Canada's so got there... some good shit going on. Like I'm gonna be we real. Do. We, 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 we have we some... make fun of Canada, but like Canada's got some some stuff I'm jealous of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got we, some we good have... stuff there. We do have some good stuff here. And you know, there is the argument that we pay for it in taxes, but and there is a lot of government wastage here too. Oh, However, yeah, at least some of it goes towards are you know the people that really need it and yeah. we are but we still have a huge 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 problem with uh poverty and we still yeah. have problems with affordable housing and we still have issues that go on and on but at least we have some programs to address some of the issues yeah well, that's good um RK, are you all right, dude? You've been quiet. <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure you're okay. I'm solid, just listening. Oh, okay, just li that's okay. Yeah, listen all you want, and man. I will say that that is part of the problem. We don't have men taking part in discussions that discuss these things. It's all the women talking. And well, dude, that's why I love <laughs> RK. He loves to listen. Like when we had our <laughs> abortion discussion, he was like, I'm going to turn off my mic and listen. Like, dude, that's. RK, you're a good man. I, I like you as a man. See, thumbs up. Thumbs up for being a good man. See, like I think that. That he should be talking and giving his thoughts as a man. But maybe that's just me. Um, yeah, body, I think body it's up to the individual. Everyone can mm -hmm. talk or listen whenever they want, you know. Uh, Bonnie Bean Body happy. asks, did you watch the debate last night? And the answer is no. I did not watch the debate last night. Um... Yeah, y'all. So, so I mean, this book just like got me thinking about a lot of various topics. And I know we went off on this tangent for a while, but that's because I've been angrily tweeting about it all week. And there's once you open up a big social discussion, you end up having people just have so many stories to share, so many different, th it just leads to so many different things that lead to so many other different things. So that's why I spent so long talking about that because also I needed to vent to someone about it because I'm listening to this book <laughs> and I'm just like, every time Jim Henson makes another accomplishment, I'm like, and where's Jane? What's she doing? She started this business with him. Where, where is she? What's she doing? The chapter where it was like, oh, and then we, and then they hired a woman and that's good. Cause we were getting flack from women's organizations. And I'm like, but why? Why, like, why? Didn't, you why didn't they hire anything? women already? <laughs> like, there's a way to fix that, my friend. Like, <laughs> there were clearly lots of women in puppetry. It's not as if it's like we couldn't hire any women because there were no women making making and performing puppets. Like, there clearly were puppetry classes were almost all women. What about Jane, dude? Yeah. What about Jane? What about Jane? And it's like, don't even. I, I don't want to see Jane get hired. I want to see Jane get her half of the business back. I want to see mm. Jane get to be half of the, like, cause that's just the problem that got me going the whole time is I'm like, they started this company together. They didn't start as a married couple. They didn't even get married until after they formed the Muppets. Like this was their, this was their project together. And then she, she had to give it up. And, like, and then I, that's my worst nightmare is watching mm. a person I'm supposed to love succeed at my dream. Cause I'm so, I get so jealous and bitter so easily. So it's like, if I married someone with the same career goals as me, and then I had to watch them succeed at my dream while I didn't, that would just make me like, I would be a terrible spouse because I would be like seething every day. Mm -hmm. And in general, I like to see the people around me succeed in the things that they are going for. But yeah, oh, that would piss me off. It was the same field. Like if 
he was into puppetry and, you know, whatever. He absolutely has no interest in it and thinks I'm insane. But <laughs> no, he doesn't think, well, I mean, anyways, um, the point being that that would drive me in, you know, crazy if somebody else takes my dream and succeeds in it and I had to give it up. And why couldn't it have been the Jim and Jane Henson company once he incorporated it? Like, right? right? That's my question. Why couldn't like, they why isn't it JJ together? Henson? Mm -hmm. If they just done it together, this would have been like the cutest thing. And I would be on this like, oh, my God, they're so cute. Power couple. I love them. He, I would just know, be like, he was too busy with his philandering ways and going and chasing tail <laughs> wherever he could find it. Yeah. He, you can't tell me Sesame Street doesn't have a couldn't have a child care program. But, you know, like. Sesame Street, dude. Sesame <laughs> Street was one of the most progressive children's programs. They uh, Yeah. Like, like, why? Yeah, why? I, and I also, like, they did yeah. hire, they hired a nanny at one point, they could afford it. So it's yeah. like, especially after the success took off, or like, even if in the meantime, it's like, there's this, uh, like, it's hard to hire a nanny, or it's hard to had to do this. Once, why not? Like, okay, well, she's taking care of the kids until the company takes off. But then when it takes off, why not? Like, why not have them do it as a team then? Mm -hmm. And they go to school eventually. It's not as if they stay at home. Like, I mean, unless you're homeschooling, but uh, you know, it's like they eventually reach that age where mm -hmm. they aren't at home all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, in this house, we stand Jane Henson, creator of the Muppets. Yeah. We love her. She's, she's wonderful. Um, we love Jim Henson for his contributions to society. There's uh, there's nothing wrong with being a big slut as long as your spouse is okay with it. If your spouse is not, it's all about consent. Anyway, that's uh, that's my, those are my thoughts on the book so far. <laughs> those are my thoughts on the book is that Jane deserved better. And every single time something happens, I'm like, okay, but Jane deserves better. Yeah. This is basically my thoughts the whole book. Um, yeah yeah it's, it's it is interesting to learn a lot about the behind the scenes stuff going on um just like how the show was put together and and things like that um and how things worked behind the scenes i find that stuff very interesting and it was it was just cool to learn about like at the beginning of television the beginning of the television era how things how things progressed and things like that, especially since now things are so different again with like, we're, we're in kind of an internet golden age. So it's kind of cool to see how innovative creations on the internet can, can do that. We've got puppets on the internet. Maybe we'll be the next Henson company. Maybe. Uh, there, the one thing that really made me a little bit jelly was how easy it was for him to get into television. Like so he was easy. into television since high school. And it's like, oh my goodness, what we would have given our eye teeth for when we were in high school to have an opportunity to work at a real radio station. I mean, the real television station. Like, mm -hmm. Those opportunities don't exist for kids anymore. What would you say, RK? I didn't hear you. I, I was gonna say the book didn't say he like just walked in and got the first job though. Like he did apply everywhere and he did yeah. get rejected everywhere for his age. It's not like he just said, Hey, I want to work in television, then he got offered the job on the spot. That's true. true. Yeah, a lot of it was his own work ethic, where it's like in um in high school he did seek that out. So in a, in a lot of cases it's like do in, do I wish I could have done that kind of thing in high school? Yeah, but also like I didn't go above and beyond to seek it out. And they also did, stressed so. that like he refused every other job that he had, even though he like his parents told him to get a job. Like all of his friends were busting tables, mm -hmm. uh, working as waiters and waitresses, and in the book just kept emphasizing it. Said it a number of times. He utterly refused to do that work, so it could have blown up in his face. But he did keep trying. Yeah, I got respect for that. Got respect for the hustle, man. Jim Henson's a boss, babe. Respect it. <laughs> It was interesting thinking about how, like, like sort of getting into his like creative process and like all, of, like all, all of the million ideas and how he was constantly pitching it. And the back of my mind was like, 
Oh man, could you imagine Jim Henson though in this day and age with like the TikToks and the YouTubes and the whatnot? Oh man, <laughs> oh, it would be wow. a totally different world if the Muppets had started like TikTok Muppets, dude. Can you, dude, we should put our, we should all put our puppets on TikTok. Paige should go on TikTok. I'll put Jazz on TikTok. I think Jazz will get made fun of on TikTok because she's not uh she's not exactly perfect to look at, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll still put her on TikTok. Well, I have, uh, Paige does have an account on TikTok. We just oh, haven't does. been doing as much work on it as we as we should be. We're mm. working on that. <laughs> working on all the social. Yeah, I've been, getting, I've been getting back into TikTok and just like, I've been doing like one minute musicals off of people's suggestions <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's been fun. Um. Well, overall, I, I jazzed the puppet. I thought the book was pretty cool because it had a lot of puppet representation. When I was reading this book, uh, first of all, as a smooth radio host, I love listening to the audiobook, listening to a narrator discussing everything in my ear. It felt uh, savvy listened to it on 2x speed uh, so she could get the book done. I listened to it nice and slow, taking my time because I just kind of cruise through life. I'm the opposite. But I like this book overall. I like seeing the puppets come to life. And that that hustle and workaholic lifestyle, I cannot relate. I am chill and cool and I just do what I love. And because I'm a puppet, then I just rest the rest of the day when I come off of Savvy's arm. You were there, so I have to come on. Hi, Pete. Hi, hi, Jazz. We totally have to get together and do, um, you know, uh, we should do maybe, I don't know exactly what we should do, but we have to do a show together. Oh, absolutely. I would love to do a show with you, Paige. Yeah, we got to figure out what we should do. We could go on an anti-MLM rant together. Oh, I would love to do that. Yeah. Or, or I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll but figure now it you're out. here right. and you're alive and I have my first puppet friend. Oh, so I, am I your first? I don't know about that, Paige. You've got well, all no, these I wonderful have puppet siblings. siblings. I have you have my siblings. siblings. But, but, you know, like you're, you're the first puppet that was like, and, and I feel. Okay, this is going to sound maybe a little bit egotistical, but I feel like I inspired your existence. So, you know, I feel like kind of big sister-ish. Yeah, that's that's right, Paige. I see you like a big sister. I definitely see you that way. You definitely inspired me to come to life and, and we have embrace my lives. puppethood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. I appreciate I, you, Paige. You're, I appreciate you're you. You're so cute. You're Aww, so cute. Thank you. Really so nice. you and you know, we're so similar. Look, we got teeth that are the same, and, and we got eyes that are similar, and even our noses are kind of the same. Yeah, you yeah, you you inspired me with your with your spoon eyes. I use plastic spoons for my eyes too. Yeah. Now we both have plastic spoon eyes, and I think it works well for both of us. And, and the yarn am- hair. We yeah, and your hair. I like yeah. your purple. Yeah, the purple is so cool. I have one of my sisters has purple hair. Yeah. Thank you. I think purple hair really works for me. Purple hair is awesome. So All that- right. Y'all, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the show soon just because... Uh, Chewie needs to walk. Chewie needs a walk, and then at 10, I'm doing... Um, I have to do an interview and then I have my new video on my channel at 11. And then, so today's just kind of a busy, busy day, but I appreciate everyone, uh, sticking with us through puppet week, through trying and learning some new skills. That's, I love having on this show, in addition to having weeks where we study, you know, gurus that we think are, are bad or whatever, just also having a week where we focus on learning a new skill or learning a new hobby or something. I think that can go a long way, but next week we're going to be studying LuLaRoe tonight, or I guess it's already out, but um, today 
the Lula Rich documentary comes out on Amazon Prime. I'm going to be watching it this evening. And I'm, I know that uh, Roberta Blevins, uh, who's in it, is going to be live tweeting about it and doing some stuff. I'll be live tweeting about it as well. And then next week, we are going to delve into LuLaRoe, the company, and we are going to uh, talk about the documentary and all of that. So uh, that's what we'll be doing next week. Um, yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you sticking around through watching my existence come to life. I started off as just a couple pieces of fabric and a mattress topper and some, some plastic sporks from some takeout. But you guys watched as I came together as your good friend Jazz and your part-time co-host. And glue! Can't forget the glue. The glue. Yeah, the glue's important. I have a lot of glue in me. I'm full of glue. So much glue inside of my body. It's a little sticky in here, but that's okay. I appreciate you guys all being here. I will see you next week. I'll make some guest appearances when we need to come into a chill mood. Bring it on down a little bit. Get a little too heated. I'll be here to bring us all back together. Keep on supporting small businesses, y'all. Check out Gail's music. Her name's Gail Gallagher. She's got her music on Spotify. And uh, you can put it in your Instagram stories. It's pretty cool. Check out her music. I play her music on my radio show all the time. Gail's music <laughs> is great. Check out uh, a Page of Puppets YouTube channel. She talks about small businesses. That's what we love here. Thanks, y'all. Have a good start to your weekend. Bye. Bye.